Liz Cheney, who is who is still a Republican, uh, is talking about what might happen if Donald Trump runs again in 2024. Listen to what she said. I think that the um, party has either got to come back from where we are right now, which is a very dangerous and toxic place, or the party will splinter and there will be a new conservative party that rises. And if Donald Trump is the nominee of the Republican Party, the party will shatter uh, and there will be a conservative party that rises in his place. <laughs> Tara thinks or hopes? I think she hopes. I think she sees herself as that splinter, as the standard bearer of the new anti-Trump Republican Party. The question is, you know, are there enough people behind her in the GOP primary electorate that could actually make that happen? I think she's going to be an interesting dynamic during the election if she does run, because she will get all of the press. You've got like half a dozen candidates all made by Trump, um, associated with him historically, and they're not going to be hitting him. And she might be there on the campaign trail or maybe even on the debate stage just pummeling him. And she might be the contrast. And who knows, she may end up rising up um, as this standard bearer. I don't think she'll still get enough votes to win the primary. Well, but there are two things here, right? I mean, one is clearly the possibility that Liz Cheney is running to warn Republicans about Trump. Look, Trump's a lot of things. He's not conservative, and that's her core point. Mm -hmm. The other issue is whether there could be a third-party independent conservative challenge, which is a kind of along the lines of what we're seeing Evan McMullen uh, mount against Mike Lee pretty effectively. But that's actually about one-party states and actually drawing that contrast really clearly. But I do think it represents the fact that for true old-school conservatives, um, do a return of Donald Trump is, is the opposite of everything they believe, and they're not going to simply appease him, as some folks looking to get into power in the short term are willing to do. You know, when I saw the word splinter, and again, she wasn't focused on this, the Republican Party rules in the primary benefits someone who can get 30, 40 Correct. percent, which right. is Donald Trump. I mean, she may be right that it will splinter, but if it splinters, he may be the beneficiary, which isn't what she was focused mm -hmm. on there. Mm -hmm. The January 6th Committee Vice Chairwoman Liz Cheney not ruling out public testimony if Donald Trump complies with a committee subpoena. But whether it's in public or behind closed doors, Cheney promising the panel would not allow it to become a spectacle. You'll remember the committee subpoenaed Trump Friday. It wants testimony under oath. We are not going to allow Television the former president. Not be. He's not going to turn this into a circus. This isn't mm -hmm. going to be, you know, his first debate uh, against Joe Biden and the circus and the food fight that that became. This this is far too serious set of issues. Our great reporters are back with us. Is there anyone at the table who thinks that Donald Trump would comply with this subpoena and not fight it for months and months past the life of the committee? No, no, no. 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 He's going to drag it out. Right. I uh, mean, if yeah. if past his prologue, and it usually is with Donald Trump. I mean, this was his tactic while in the White House when he faced a litany of legal troubles, congressional oversight, congressional requests for information. They dragged it out, dragged it out, put it through the courts, and I would not be surprised if that was a tactic here. And uh, I mean, and this yeah. idea that he's not, that they're not going to have a circus, the problem <laughs> is that, you know, Donald Trump leads the circus. He brings it wherever he goes. He loves a rally. He's a showman. If, if in some, you know, world he did testify, it is going to be a circus, I, you know, it's just, that's just a fact. You also asked tongue-in-cheek earlier, well, whether if there was a guarantee of a, of a evening showing <laughs> if, if President Trump would say, if former President Trump would say yes. And, I mean, he does like the attention, as we all know. All attention is good attention for him. But the likelihood of that happening, based on what, what Representative Cheney said, is very low. I would suspect his lawyers would say no, no, no. Ixnay, Ixnay. Absolutely no. Ixnay. <laughs> Ixnay is a better way to put it. Yeah. Uh, you know, Cheney, obviously, has made quite clear uh, she's not a fan of Trump. She thinks he's a threat to the Republican Party and the country. Uh, she also made clear in this interview uh, that she's going to take issue with people like the Virginia governor, Glenn Youngkin, a rising Republican star, but was out campaigning uh, in Arizona recently. He has also campaigned with other election deniers. Liz Cheney says for her, that's a litmus test. I think they they are really indefensible decisions. And, uh, you know, I've said I think that uh, Glenn Youngkin has uh, done a good job as governor of Virginia. Um, but nobody should be out uh, advocating for the election of people who uh, will not honor the sanctity of our elections process. And, you know, people who do that are, in fact, putting politics ahead of the Constitution and ahead of the country. She's making that argument 15 days from the midterms, but this is also a foundation of an argument she's going to continue to make as we go from 2022 into 2024. The question is, can she succeed, or is she a minority in the new Republican Party? Well, I think it's pretty clear that she's a minority right now, and I think specifically on Liz Cheney, the question is also, what platform will she have uh, starting next year when she's no longer a member of Congress, when she's no longer the vice chair of this committee? Does she decide to run for president? Uh, 
Uh, does she find another way to keep this message going? But uh, she is, for sure, at least in terms of people in the party, speaking publicly and advocating for that, uh, not in the majority on, uh, on this issue. And so it's interesting in the sense that, you know, Youngkin says Joe Biden won the election, but he tries to obviously keep faith, keep support among the people like Carrie Lake, among election deniers. Liz Cheney says, I don't want any part of that. She also said in that interview that if Trump is the nominee, she is certain there will be a fracturing and a new conservative movement, conservative party, will come out to your point about what's her future. Might that be it? I mean, I'm not quite sure Liz Cheney is correct that if Trump is the nominee that the party would fracture. I mean, even uh, Mitch McConnell, who is one of uh, Trump's biggest antagonists, has said if he is the nominee in 24, he would support him. I do think there is going to be a consolidation if, again, Trump is, and, and that is, again, a big if, if right. President Trump is leading the Republican Party um, in 2024. But the problem for Liz Cheney, along with what Jeff said, is that a litmus test for her is not a litmus test for the rest of the party. Right. Um, I think Republicans have made a calculation that even if they dismiss the election denials that are coming from some of the candidates, that winning for them is a better is better for them at the end of the day so they can win, put in place Republican policies. So, so they're kind of overlooking that here. And Liz Cheney is a very lonely voice here. A lonely, uh, she's a lonely voice who's hoping that these election deniers lose uh, so that she can make the case after the election. See, I told you so. We should have won that governor's office. We should have won that Senate seat, and we didn't. Well, I think she also said that, you know, her primary race was like a test for the Constitution or whatever, and she didn't win that one. So, I mean, I think that the problem is over and over again, Liz Cheney's party has let her down and left her behind. And so even though she is speaking now, she has that platform, it does not seem like it is making a difference at this point in the, with her own party.